Greetings, budding entomologists and bug-eyed hive minders. My name is Lucius, and this is War HQ. On today's episode, what we'll be going through is my one of my epic Armageddon forces um, that I have 3D printed. Now, you've probably seen a lot of my other epic Armageddon uh, content on this. I've got a um, Empress Children force, which is pretty much full proxy with a couple of originals, and I have a massive Elder force, which is all originals. What I decided I wanted to do was make myself a 3D printed army, just to round out the trio of armies that I could potentially have. And what you're seeing here before you is just that. All of the free files that are available online, this is what I pretty much used to create this force. So in this video, what I'll be doing is going through each of these models, showing you how they came out, and also afterwards going through how I'm going to be using them as an army in Epic Armageddon, which I have played quite a few games with these guys already. Um, and I'll break them down into divisions and show you my thoughts and feelings on some of these units as well. If you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to War HQ. It takes you a second to do, means a heap to us as so we continue to grow as a channel. Um, if you're a complete legend, consider Patreon. Otherwise, like, share, comment, all of those things. And please discuss your Tyranid forces with me, um, ideas that you have or things that you think I might be able to improve. We appreciate it all, all here at War HQ and thank you for your time. But for now, let's get started. The Tyranid Force itself um, is a really unique one within Epic Armageddon. Um, like in 40k and Kill Team and other things, these guys are known for their close combat, is what you'd probably say. Although they do have some really good um, ranged sort of tank sort of shooting options. Um, particular favourite of mine is the Exocrines, um, a pretty solid sort of tank option. And um, also the Dactylus, which is like an artillery option. I, I quite like those. And then combine that with... Um, just some decent sort of uh, shooting from some of the bigger models and you've got a pretty nasty force. Now, most of the stuff moves pretty quick um, compared to most things and um, is, you know, you can tend to generally swarm the hell out of things. If you do get into close combat with the enemy, they're generally going to come off second best against most of your units. Um, but some interesting standouts um, for the Tyranid force is they have a thing called Synapse and Brood because uh, they're like a swarming uh, sort of critter. And so all your little bugs, uh, like your Hormagaunts, Tormagaunts, which you can see down the below here, which are represented in mass, like each base of these has like 12 bugs on it. I really love it. Whoever designed that file, you're a legend. It just really captures that that swarm element of this force. But um, they're like a, um, a swarm unit or a brood unit. And what you can do is um, your Tyranid commanders can um, bring back dead brood units, basically. So your um, Hive Tyrants and your... Um, your uh, warriors and stuff like that can bring back at the end turn um, a number of units equal to their sign-ups ability. So that's really cool as well. Like it's good to just throw these things in there, get them murdered, and then bring them back at the end of the turn is, is pretty fun. And your opponent generally doesn't like that. That's kind of their main rules, you know what I mean? They've got a couple of with terrain and that though they can move across and adapt to and things like that. But um, it's really just a, a mass swarm army um, with some really cool like uh, sort of big big things and nasty stuff you can do to people. <laughs> um, so I, I quite like it. It's going to be interesting to paint. I think it's going to be a fairly simple paint job just with some highlights and stuff, and I think I can pull that off pretty pretty easy when I get around to actually doing this one. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you the units themselves. Okay, the first two units I'm going to talk about here are our brood swarm units themselves. So we've got the Hormagaunts and we've got the Termagants. So really... As the title says, they're expendable in their special rules, um, which means you can bring them back, you know what I mean, um, from the dead, uh, which is quite cool if you've got those Synops leader characters with them. Um, but a couple of standouts here is uh, the Hormagaunts themselves um, have Infiltrator as a rule, which is really interesting. It means you can double your move um, on the charge and you can also ignore enemy zones of control. So you can actually sneak past the enemy with these Hormagaunts and, and attack things in the back like they're squishy or juicy or stuff that you want to get to which does make them a really handy unit. Um, and, the Gan and also the Hormagons that have a 3-plus um, close combat, which is, is pretty good. Not bad at all. Um, and coupled with this, the Gants just give them a little bit of fire support um, if you're going to use them with them. Uh, they're not very good at anything, really. Like 5-plus shooting, pretty crap all around. You can only shoot in small arms, but they serve their purpose. And uh, that's the point of these things. As I was saying before with these, the 12 per base really, really make this look cool. Um, I re really recommend this as a visual on the board. It, it just looks great. 
I can't wait to um, paint these up and uh, and see that as that full swarm. I think I think it just represents the tyrannids a little bit better, especially with these small bugs, um, which should be just on mass really and expendable as they're meant to be. But um, yeah, there's our little bugs. Now the two main commander options you can have uh, for the to lead these small bug swarms, um, those sun ups formations basically. These guys, so you've got your hive tyrant over here on the left, and you have your tyrannid warriors over on the right. So tyrannid warriors, uh, pretty good in close combat. Um, they've got a little bit of range with their death spitters. Um, they have a sign ups of one, which means they can bring back one unit per turn. And their big brother over here, um, the hive tyrant, is able to bring back two. He has a sign up to two, and is a bit better. Has like a good, really good close combat weapon. Um, has a ranged attack as well has reinforced armor just a little bit tougher all around and as a commander as well which really helps um that those extra formations that you want to create within the line but uh those are your two options there for your sign up swarm commanders now a third and definitely superior option uh for your sign ups commander is the dominatrix now the dominatrix is a brute of a thing has four damage capacity as a commander, fearless, invulnerability save, and regenerates, which means it gets one wound per turn back, which is very handy in a pinch, and it has reinforced armor as well, which makes it very durable leader model. Um, another good thing you can do with it is you can give it a symbiote um, relationship, so it's like it gives it a supreme commander and increases its sign-ups value by plus one, which ends up giving it three per turn. So. You have this thing with a horde of little bugs, and you can bring back three every turn, which is super handy. But the best thing about this is its array of weaponry. It has Bio Titan bio cannons, which, so you've got basically you've got three good shots there against APAT. It has energy pulses, good range, which gives you macro weapon BP strikes, um, which is like artillery. And then it has massive scything talons, two of those, which are Titan killers. Um, so this thing is very, very good. And as a Supreme Commander option with a Sybarite, it really makes this awesome. Definitely my, f this is the, well, it's the leader of my army, I guess you could say. One of my favorite units uh, in the force is the Humble Lictor. Now the Lictor um, is very versatile in this game. It can um, first strike, which means it gets to, when you charge, you get to fight first before the enemy uh, normally it's resolved together, but um, with first strike you can fight first and you can kill them before anything's inflicted, which is amazing. You can also infiltrate, so just like we are talking about before with the Hormagons, it can um, move past uh, enemies to the ones you want and double on the charge, which is super cool. It has an invulnerability save, can scout, so you can spread it right out, you can deny objectives and areas to the um, enemy, and it can also teleport. Very, very cool. So this is kind of like your... Your souped up Terminator version <laughs> for the Lictors. Um, obviously, it kicks ass in close combat. Um, and um, yeah, really all round good option, uh, uh, which is taken as a independent swarm formation. Now, a light vehicle option that you have for the Tyranids is this thing. It's called the Biovore. Um, not particularly great at anything, um, but what it is good at is it has spore mines. Um, and you, you do, look, it's AP5, AT6, but it disrupts, which is good. So um, every hit that you do inflicts a um, blast token on the enemy. And it can also indirect fire hitting on a 6, which is really handy too. So you can shoot over terrain pieces and stuff with this thing. Um, look, they're, they're pretty good, um, you know, just as a light vehicle option to harry the enemy. I think they work well for the role that they have. And that's why I always include them. They're cheap enough anyway. It's a good little filler. Or you can add them onto your um, sign-ups units. Now, this is um, the Carnifex, and it's a really good armoured vehicle option. So it's like a tank, basically, uh, but it's reinforced, which is really good, um, and fearless, so you can't lose them when, when you retreat. Um, as you can imagine with this one, it's excellent in close combat. It has a macro weapon extra attack, which really makes it great with its large scything talons. Um, and... With the 4 plus armor save, 3 plus close combat, you can't really go wrong with adding these into, say, like a Hormagaunt um, formation to give them a bit of extra punch. And that's exactly how I use these. Sometimes the simplest units are the best, and um, these Exocrines as like an armored vehicle option, so they're basically like tank equivalent, 
are really, really handy. They've got a four plus armor, but they also have reinforced armor, which makes them really hard to kill for a start. They have a 45 centimeter range and two attacks at AP4, AT5, which makes them, in my opinion, extremely useful, particularly when you have them in a larger swarm like I do of eight. You can really decimate enemy armor and infantry quite successfully from range, and that's why I really rate these. Now, the Tyranids have an artillery option, and it's this thing. It's the Dactylus. And um, this, like the um, Exocrine I just talked about, is really good. Four-plus armor with reinforced. Makes it super tough to kill. But it has bile pods, and that's the main thing you want it for. Um, they're indirect fire. It's like artillery, basically, and you get one BP per bile pod. So, uh, and they also disrupt, so you get lots of blast tokens on the enemy. So that makes these a really solid artillery choice within the Tyranid force. And the model is pretty awesome. Now, as far as aircraft go, you've got um, really only this option, which is the Haridan. Um, you can have up to three of them in a large swarm of Haridan. They're okay. Like, they're, they're not bad. They've got damage capacity three, which is huge. Um, reinforced armor. And they act as a skimmer, basically. Um, and they can transport gargoyles. Um, I don't have any of those models, but I will get them eventually. Um, look... It's not too bad. The, the damage capacity and reinforced armor alone makes them pretty tough. And then you could, you've got, you know, some good shooting options there too. So um, they've got, you know, twin Harrod and bio cannons, but they really do excel in um, close combat again with macro weapon extra attacks in close combat. So I've got three of those there. Probably won't use three of them in the force itself, but they are an option and it's nice to have a skimmer option in this force. Now all of this leads to the big, 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 big bad bug himself. And it's the Hierophant Bio Titan, which is a war engine option for this force. Um, and it, as you know, as it says in the box, it's pretty, pretty bloody awesome. Um, standard, it has Ripper Tentacles, um, which is two extra attacks, which have First Strike, very important. And it has two gigantic Scything Talons, um, extra attack each with um, Titan Killer D3. So... You really want to wreck someone's Titan Day and their war engines, this is the way to go. But on top of that, you can also choose two other weapons uh, between the Bio Launcher, the uh, Bio Titan Cannon, the Razor Claws, and the Pyro Acid Spray. So you can basically bring this thing into like a, a bit of an artillery role, a shooting role, or you can just go full close combat with the Razor Claws and just really, if this thing got into close combat with any Titan, it is dead um, because it'll just eliminate it with um, Titan Killer weapons. Or just a whole, you can imagine a whole battalion of tanks or something. This thing would just shred them um, beyond repair. Um, now, it's damage capacity 6. It's fearless and vulnerability save. It regenerates every turn, which makes it even better. Reinforced, so a very tough thing to kill. Um, and definitely one of my favorite models uh, within this force. All right, so before you is how I envision my force, how I've been using it currently. Um, and this is what I wanted to show you, uh, my main battle formations here. Now you can see I've got four main synapse formations. So the first one over here um, has two warriors. It has three biovores, and then it has six units of termagants. So it's a bit of a ranged one, uh, support weapons, and you've got a bit of backup where there's other bits of shooting as well. And the the um, warriors can fight in close combat pretty successfully. Now the second unit is my main one um, with my dominatrix and symbiote. It has a carnifex. And then it has six units of termagants. The third synapse formation is this one, which has a hive tyrant. It has a carnifex and it has six units of hormigaunts. And the last synapse formation is this one. I've used these hive guard to stand in as two hive tyrants. Um, and I also have a carnifex and six termagants. That's another real good close combat formation with a bit of backup as well with shooting. Um, then moving on to sort of the more the support formations, we have uh, the Lictors over here. So the Lictors are a scout infiltrator formation, which I've talked about. We have the light vehicle biovores, uh, just for harrying the enemy, taking objectives. Um, we have the Exocrines, a unit of eight of these. And as I was saying, that's very effective. They've got two shots each and their four plus reinforced armor. Makes them very hard to kill. We have our artillery Dactylus over here. Uh, we have three units of Harrods uh, if we want to use them. Um, as our air support and then finally we have the big bug itself um, the bio titan um, just to flesh things out there 
So that there's my force, probably about 3,500. So you've got to drop a couple of little things out of this force to make it work. But that is what I've been using. It's been fairly successful. Haven't won every game, but I've definitely done a lot of work with them. I think um, some of the standout units for me are the Dominatrix. Dominatrix is really good. I love the sign-up stuff. I love bringing stuff back. And as I was saying before, the Exocrines are really a workhorse. And I have had a little bit of a success with the lifters, like by teleporting them in and just disrupting and taking down the enemy um, at various times in the battle. But that there is the formation as it stands. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just a look at my 3D printed models. And also something I didn't mention before, which I've mentioned on previous videos, is these models were all printed on a uh, Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. Just for anyone who's interested who might be thinking, ah, oh, these look pretty cool. I wonder how I could print those. And not saying you need to use that machine, but that's just the sort of effects that you can get out of it. Now, I did have a few problems and issues, obviously, with just unsupported files like this, just from the internet that were freebies. Um, I did have to experiment a bit. I did have some bits that didn't print. Uh, I learned a lot about things. Um, you see a lot of these bases on the Gaunts and Gants are a little bit bent, but that's my fault. I didn't support them uh, when, I, when I cured them. I just left them flopping around, laying everywhere, and they sort of warped, I guess you'd say. But that doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Um, it's just a big swarm of bugs, and it's my swarm of bugs, and I love them. So if you have any other suggestions for what you might think I should include into this force, or ways that you use your Tyranid forces, or any 3D printing experiences you have at all, please let me know in the comments down below. But for now, my name is Lucius, this is War HQ, and we are signing out.